Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Autocar India Quick News. Coming up over the next few minutes is your weekly snapshot to all the latest from the world of automobiles. But before we begin, do hit subscribe to the Autocar India channel and press the bell icon to stay notified on all our latest uploads. There were lots of important announcements this week and first up is the update on the all new Skoda Kushak. The wait is finally over and the mid-size SUV will be launched in India on June 28th. The new Skoda Kushak will be introduced in three trim levels, active, ambition and style along with two petrol engine options. The range will start with a 1 liter 115 horsepower 3 cylinder TSI turbo petrol engine that will be offered with 6 speed manual and auto gearbox options. While those looking for more power will also have the 1.5 liter 4 cylinder 150 horsepower TSI unit to opt for. The 1.5 TSI will be available with 6 speed manual and 7 speed DSG transmissions. We have learned that the deliveries of the 1 liter TSI variants will commence on July 12th, while the more expensive 1.5 liter versions of the Kushak will make it to buyers only by July end. A 10-inch touchscreen, in-car Wi-Fi, ambient lighting and sunroof will be some of the key features on offer. Safety kit will include 6 airbags, a multi-collision braking system, TPMS and standard fit ESC on all variants. Don't forget to watch our review of the Kushak on the Autocar India YouTube channel. In some key announcements of this week, Maruti Suzuki models are set to receive a price hike in the coming months, making it the third price revision already this year by India's largest car maker. Maruti Suzuki India has announced plans to hike prices of its car and SUV models between July and September, citing higher input costs. The company has said that the cost of manufacturing its products has continued to remain adversely affected since last year due to the rising prices of raw materials among other factors. The increase, however, shall vary for different models across its range. The upcoming price hike will be the company's third price increment this year with the first one coming in January and ranging from Rs 5,000 to Rs 34,000. It was later followed up with another price revision in the month of April. After Delhi, Karnataka and Maharashtra, Gujarat has now become the latest state to announce a new EV policy to push the adoption of green, zero-emission vehicles. As per the new EV policy, the Gujarat government will provide incentives of up to Rs 10,000 per kilowatt hour for EVs. These benefits will be in addition to the revisions in the FAME 2 policy announced earlier this month. The maximum X factory price to avail the incentive has been capped at Rs 1.5 lakh for electric two-wheelers, Rs 5 lakh for electric three-wheelers and Rs 15 lakh for electric four-wheelers, both personal and commercial, respectively. Under the scheme, the state government is targeting a total of 2 lakh EVs, which include 1 lakh 10,000 electric two-wheelers, 70,000 electric three-wheelers and 20,000 electric four-wheelers. Furthermore, the state government has also announced 25% capital subsidy on equipment or machinery for commercial public EV charging stations for two, three and four wheelers. It will be limited to Rs 10 lakhs per station for the first 250 commercial public EV charging stations. Coming to the luxury car segment, there was lots of action in this space and it was a particularly busy week for the BMW Group. BMW India has launched the Refresh 5 series which gets some styling tweaks and tech upgrades with this midlife makeover. Prices for the Refresh model range between Rs 62.9 lakh for the petrol and Rs 71.9 lakh X showroom for the diesel variants respectively. The updated 5 series is 27mm longer than the outgoing model, although other dimensions remain exactly identical. Exterior changes are centered around the front grille which is wider and now positioned lower than before. It also receives a new single frame design with a central element in chrome and sits within a reprofiled front bumper. The larger grille also gels very well with the new headlights which feature BMW's laser light technology in the higher M Sport variants. The facelift also gets a redesigned rear bumper and more heavily structured taillights which are now similar in design to those on the latest 3 series. Furthermore, all 5 series models will now come fitted with trapezoidal tailpipes and 18 inch alloys as standard. On the inside, the 5 Series facelift gets the 7th generation version of BMW's iDrive infotainment system along with a bigger 12.3 inch touchscreen as standard. There's also a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster on offer. The car continues to be powered by the existing 2 litre petrol in the 530i M Sport trim that develops 252 horsepower and 350 Nm of peak torque. It also gets a 190 HP 400 Nm 2 litre diesel in the 520D luxury line and a 265 horsepower 620 Nm 3 litre diesel in the 530D M Sport variant. 8 speed torque converter automatic gearbox comes standard across the range. 
Mini has launched the updated Mini 3 door, 3 door convertible and the Mini John Cooper works in India with a host of cosmetic and interior changes. The prices for the 2021 range of Mini models start at Rs 38 lakh X showroom for the Mini 3 door, Rs 44 lakh for the convertible and go all the way up to Rs 45.5 lakh for the sportier JCW trim. The updated models get exterior design changes such as the new grille that now stretches to the base of the redesigned front bumper. The JCW model, however, gets a more aggressive look with prominent air vents and an all-black finishing for the mesh pattern grille. There is also the introduction of new LED headlights with integrated LED fog lamps while the side indicators have now been positioned inside the redesigned side scuttles. All three models sit on newly designed 17-inch alloy wheels and the JCW gets the option of 18-inch wheels as well. While the cabin is largely similar to the outgoing model, there are new colors for the upholstery and addition of an 8.8-inch touchscreen infotainment system as well as optional 5-inch digital instrument display. All three models come powered by a 2-litre turbocharged petrol engine. In the Cooper S spec, available in the 3-door and the convertible, it develops 192 horsepower and 280 Nm of peak torque while being mated to a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. The JCW, on the other hand, gets more power at 231 horses, 320 Nm of peak torque and an 8-speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters. Dual airbags, ABS, traction control and stability control are standard safety features across the range. Audi is set to introduce its all-electric e-tron brand in India next month. Both the e-tron and the e-tron sportback are slated to arrive at our shores to rival the growing competition in the luxury EV space. The all-electric Audi e-tron SUV and the e-tron Sportback are set to be launched in India on July 22. The e-tron is likely to be priced around an estimated Rs 1.2 crore X showroom. While the standard SUV gets a more upright silhouette with large grille and sharply cut LED headlights, the e-tron Sportback on the other hand gets a roofline that slopes down aggressively towards the rear. The cabin of the e-tron is marked by Audi's virtual cockpit digital instrument cluster, a 10.1-inch infotainment system and an 8.8-inch touch display for the climate control. Globally, the e-tron is available with a variety of powertrains with a 71.2 kWh battery pack for the entry-level 50 Quattro trim and 95 kWh for the higher-powered 55 Quattro and e-tron S trims. Depending upon the powertrain and driving conditions, Audi's EV is certified for a range between 282 km and 441 km on the European WLTP driving cycle. The larger capacity e-tron battery can be charged from 0 to 80% in 8.5 hours using an 11 kWh AC charger or in just 30 minutes using a DC fast charger rated at 150 kW. Jaguar has started accepting the bookings for the updated Jaguar F-Pace SVR and the high-performance SUV is set to be introduced in India very soon. The SVR is the hotted up F-Pace and comes powered by a 5-litre supercharged V8 petrol engine that makes 550 horsepower and 700 Nm of peak torque, channeling the drive to all four wheels via an 8-speed automatic unit. Jaguar claims a 4-second dash to the 100 kph mark and a top speed of 286 km per hour. The SUV also gets changes to the suspension and steering for enhanced dynamics and the drive modes also get software revisions along with additional modes. The brakes on the new F-Pace SVR have also been recalibrated. The SVR will be identifiable by its larger wheels and more aggressive bumpers compared to the standard F-Pace. On the inside, the SUV gets Jaguar's 11.4-inch PV Pro infotainment system and digital dials with SVR graphics. An SVR-specific drive mode selector and variant-specific trim and upholstery are the other notable changes. Porsche has revealed the new 911 GT3 Touring which is now tuned to offer more performance on a day-to-day -day basis rather than just being an outright track-focused car. The 2021 Porsche 911 GT3 Touring is now more understated with toned-down styling and bespoke elements like the aluminium window trims, color-coded front splitter, tinted headlights and a Touring badge at the rear. The fixed rear wing has also been removed in favour of a concealed and automatically extending one. On the inside, the embellishments include a unique leather finish for the seats, steering wheel, gear stick, centre console and armrest, as well as all black aluminium tread plates and dashboard. While the car remains mechanically identical to the standard 911 GT3, it gets a host of important updates to enhance the driving experience. The GT3 Touring retains the 4-litre naturally aspirated flat-six engine that puts out 5110 horsepower. 10 horsepower more than the 991 second generation GT3. The engine, as with the old GT3, is capable of revving to close to 9000 rpm. 
The 911 Touring will come equipped with a 6-speed manual gearbox or an optional 7-speed PDK transmission, the same as the standard GT3. Coming to two-wheelers now, BMW Motorrad is set to launch the updated 2021 R1250 GS and R1250 GS Adventure in India very soon with additional safety features. To begin with, the updated Touring bikes will get a new set of colors while the standard R1250 GS will get a dual-tone triple black and solid white paint scheme, the R1250 GS Adventure will get the triple black color paired with a new ice grey color. The bike should also be available in BMW signature white, red and blue rally colors too. The updated models will get features such as a dynamic traction control, BMW's integral ABS Pro system and an eco mode to maximize fuel efficiency. The company will also update the optional Hill Start Control Pro system and offer adaptive cornering lights as well. Powering the two motorcycles will be a 1254cc twin cylinder engine developing 136 horsepower and 143 nm of peak torque. For all the Harley Davidson fans out there, the company is set to reveal a brand new motorcycle in the sports segment on July 13. Harley-Davidson intends to enter the sports segment with an all-new motorcycle powered by the same 1250cc Revolution Max engine as the Pan America. The bike will be a departure from the conventional, fully fared super sport machine design. Harley has released a teaser image that bears an uncanny resemblance to the cylinder head region of the 1250 custom prototype which was unveiled some time back. The Future of Vehicles section of the Harley website also features a high-performance model for this year and if the custom is indeed going into production, it will be something to look out for. After Bajaj and TVS, Yamaha has revealed its plans about developing an EV for India. The company has learned to be working on an EV platform for both India and international markets. Globally, Yamaha has a contract with Taiwan's Gogoro to sell redesigned Gogoro electric two-wheelers under the Yamaha brand. However, it is unlikely that the Yamaha EC05 electric scooter will come to India because Gogoro has recently signed an agreement with Hero Motor Corp to develop new electric scooters on its battery swap compliant platform. It is therefore understood that Yamaha is developing a brand new two-wheeler EV platform at its headquarters in Japan and will offer a unique design for the Indian market. However, it doesn't appear that the Yamaha's electric two-wheeler will be launched in the country anytime soon. This is because the company aims to introduce it only when there is more clarity on a stable EV policy from the government. And that's all the news we have this week. Thank you very much for watching. See you again next week with more news and more scoops from the exciting world of automobiles.